I'm Joe. You, you, you know me because you're watching this video. And I think my favorite card is probably, it's got to just be Chopper. Hey everybody, I'm really excited to let you know that we're going to be at the Star Wars Unlimited Community Celebration on February 10th. That's me and Kurt <laughs> and Evan. and Leo. Yay! We're all gonna be in Minnesota hanging out with the Star Wars Unlimited community and developers and designers and I'm pretty sure we're gonna get our hands on some actual cards which means I'm gonna need a deck box and a bunch of sleeves to put my new cards in. <laughs> See you in Minnesota on February 10th! Well, it's 22 degrees in Minnesota. I'm about to go pick up Leo. We're gonna go play Star Wars Unlimited. I got some caffeine. Let's go. Well, here we go. This is uh, me and Kurt. We are on the road. To Minneapolis for the uh, the community event. Hey everybody, Evan from the Jodo Cast here. Just landed at MSP. So I'm only a few minutes away from heading out to our destination for the Star Wars Unlimited Celebration event. Can't wait to see everybody, uh, all of our podcast friends, and all my podcast co-hosts. And we'll let you all know how things are going. See you later. Hey everybody, it's the JotoCast. All in one place for once. I don't, I'm introducing this like it's a podcast, but it's not. This is probably going to be in the middle of a different video. Oh. But we're here. <laughs> I don't know why I'm sad all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, oh, it's not special? I mean, it's special. It's just... All right. This is, it's the first night of the Star Wars Unlimited Community Celebration. That's what it's called. Yes, yes. correct. We're celebrating the community because they understand that they need a community for this game to be as cool as it can be. Oh, my name is Evan the Hitman Lewis, and my favorite unlimited card so far, uh, well, Boba Fett. What, let's just recap the, the day and what we should expect for tomorrow, and then I want to go to bed. We flew, we got here, This had is a very good flight. This is maybe the first time all four of us have been in the same physical space ever. Maybe. We, we think we can know. prove it. I this is not should, CGI. I think also... High five. We're passing down the high five. See, we're all here. Say. So I'm Josh Massey. I am the organized play program manager at Fantasy Flight Games. So I do organized play stuff, and I love every second of it. And my top two favorite cards, you don't need to find me online, by the way. We don't want to do that. Uh, but my top two favorite, Kanan Jarrus. Kanan just has to be my top. Mm -hmm. And then... I'm gonna have to go with Devotion, just because I love the art so much, and I'm an upgrade kind of guy. Nice. So, love the card. So we've all been at the Mall of America, which is a cool place. I think it's a cool place. It's weird to like think a mall is cool, but it's, it's hip. cool. Um, it has attracted an eclectic clientele, I will say. The People mall? watching at the mall is oh, a little yes. interesting. Including card gamers are here this weekend, too. Yeah, yes, the eclectic demographic <laughs> of Star Wars gamers. I think it's well, fun just, to... just in general, I do think like the, 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 the breadth of people they've invited is interesting. They've, you know, obviously there's us, and I've seen a few, you know, we do general Star Wars games. I've seen other people whose channels cover just TCGs in general, mm -hmm. or just board games in general. Mm -hmm. There's a guy from comicbook.com here. Matt Aguilar from comicbook.com, and uh, my favorite card is the, like one of the first ones they showed, the Princess Leia showcase card. Uh, that thing is beautiful and I must own it. Nice. 
Oh, um, really? There's, yeah, that's the guy I was sitting next to at dinner. He's from comicbook.com. Oh. Um, well, I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say probably at least half to three quarters of all the, like, Star Wars Unlimited focused podcasts that are, like, U.S. based are, are here today, too. My name is Nelson. You can find me at Nelson all over. And my favorite card, or maybe the one I'm most excited for, is The Forces With Me. Yeah, people trickled in, and we are kind of hanging out in the lobby playing with proxy cards. And we played the four-player version of the Star Wars deck building game, which was, I would say, fine. Um, yeah, it's Star Wars deck building game. Yeah, it's, it, the game is really cool, so I guess maybe the fact that playing a four-player didn't make it more cool was sad. <laughs> <laughs> I was really excited because I got to meet Christina Ariel, who I think maybe Evan and I were the only people who recognized. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I recognized her from a distance. I was like, oh, You recognized gosh. her from Critical Role and Star and her, Wars stuff. And her Twitter. And I recognized her because she hosts the Higher Public show on the Star Wars YouTube channel and also does like hosting stuff at Star Wars Celebration. <laughs> and so I got to talk to her about Higher Public stuff, and that was cool. Um, and I think she's hosting the stream tomorrow um, because there was a dinner tonight where we're all mingling with each other and the Fantasy Flight people. And this is just sort of like a little warm-up because tomorrow is the big day where there's going to be the stream and we're going to be opening boosters and playing games and talking to people and then they kick us out for a little bit and then we come back to the same place and it's like an after party, uh, which sounds wild. My name is Kurt and I'm here with the Joe cast. Uh -huh. He's home for Star Wars Gaming. My favorite card, uh, I think the Leia unit card that lets you exhaust people. That's a really good one. You know, like we've said before, this is not the same fantasy flight that we've dealt with for the last 10, 12 years. They're putting a lot of thought into it. They're doing like full court press uh, on all these different angles to make sure people are involved, people are excited. They're all excited. Mm -hmm. That's all a good sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody here is excited. I'm excited. Excited to see, to get to play with some more of the other people and see what they do, what they're into. Because a lot of the people are card gamers first, so they play all the card games. And that's interesting to me because that's not why I'm here. It's I'm here because it's a Same. Star Wars game. You know, it's not like, oh, I don't play all the card games. I'm not a card gamer like a lot of these people are, which is an interesting yeah. kind of vibe. And I think that's, that's great. They're bringing in people who are going to be able to talk about the game to an audience outside your traditional card gamer audience mm. because I think the Star Wars IP has the ability to pull people into the game that normally would not look into a card game at all. I mean, Lorcana has done the same thing mm -hmm. just by virtue of being dizzy. And I think Star Wars being Star Wars also has that power. Uh, my name is Roy McCarthy, also known as Ryback Stun. You can find me everywhere as Ryback Stun. Uh, my favorite card, that is an excellent question. We'll, <laughs> we'll say the Boba Fett Legendary. Since nice. it meshes with a lot of the cunning gameplay style that I like a lot. Nice. From the, the core mechanics of the game are very simple. There's so few card types, and they take a lot of the guesswork Mm -hmm. out of the game and then the distribution method of not just the packs but the cards within the packs it's all geared towards making entry oh yeah as the, simple the, as the, possible. The, 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 the the card distribution and packs very consumer friendly I mean aside from showcases you know being one yeah. one in yeah. like a, two cases yeah um, which is sucks Meaning, which means, you know, your average person is never going to have one. Man, I think my voice sounds way deeper right now than it normally does. It, just it, because it, it went off a cliff, so, like, within so the last sexy. 10 minutes, maybe. Yeah, so it was... Probably it, even at the start of this it, video, it was You different. just need more bourbon. So it was very loud in the in the restaurant where we yeah. were all having the dinner, so you were not able to speak yeah, quietly. Yeah, no. My throat the, shredded. One of us is going to pull a showcase card. Wow. And if you don't... You're off the show? 
I'm afraid I'm not going to even know it's a showcase. So now I get rid of it. I honestly I like. Will, how will I know? You will know. So, they they, it's they so look really. I can't they look read it. They're they, they're going to look completely. And it's different. only leaders, right? This yeah, isn't a it's, real card. It's so it's a promo thing. Monopoly <laughs> money. The garbage. <laughs> the proof of purchase marker. Yeah. No. They're 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 only leaders. And they're gonna look totally different from every other leader you pull. Okay. So you will know. And I dare you to film yourself just biting a chunk out of one if you pull it. <laughs> is this real? <laughs> well, like, a, a, like a prospector. Yeah. My name is yeah. Davis. People can find me at Tower Number Nine on YouTube and TowerNumberNine.com and stuff. And uh, my favorite card probably changes a lot right now. Uh, Iden Versio, the the leader, is probably one of my faves. <laughs> But uh, yeah, you know, it could be something else next week. Maybe we're gonna open up a new card and see 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 my new favorite at this event. But we're all really excited. I mean, we've been playing games with people's proxied, printed out decks already uh, today that other people have brought. So we're all ready to play with the real real cards too. Oh yeah. We're gonna go because Evan and I have not slept. This is the Jotocast way. You get your booster, don't open it yet. You gotta talk to it. You yeah. gotta carry it around in your pocket for a week. And you gotta play it diddle. Beethoven. <laughs> Put the, your headphones on diddle. and play it Beethoven. Go take it to Lamaze oh. and then you open it and you'll get what you want. I'm and if you don't, you'll love it anyways. I'm manifesting a showcase, Leia. <laughs> oh! oh! All right, yeah, everybody. Right here. If there's not a showcase, Leia, uh, we'll Kurt decide what. Kurt the show. Sorry. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. End of the free. I'm going to bed. Okay. Bye. These cups suck. Yeah. My name is Corey Scott. You can find me with uh, Fancy Flight Games team. And my favorite card is aggression. We're all waiting to get in to the event. I'm gonna, I'm gonna creep on the people inside real quick. We're getting ready to go in. I don't know if you can see, there's, ooh, there's a lot of good stuff in there. What, tell me your name and your favorite unlimited card. Leo. Oh. It doesn't matter, I don't care, they're opening up. Yes! Let's go! Woohoo! Yahoo! Alright, we're waiting in line. I don't know, it's a box full of products that you can't help right now. Top Misfits, and I think our my favorite card's got to be Sabine. Sabine, all right. Sabine, she's nice. A beast. Hello, I am Joe Lutovsky. There it is. Right yeah. There. Joe Lutovsky. There we go. I misheard you. All right, did you hear what the spiel was? Ooh, uh, don't open anything. Don't open any booster packs until instructed to do so. And then awesome. just straight back through the hallway. until we tell you to. We're going to talk about what we're going to be doing shortly. There we go. So this, I, I wanted to record my first ever trade. Oh. We did it. Okay, Leo, you and I just played our first real game of Star Wars Unlimited with real cards. Uh, and I won. Go? I won. Yeah, so you won. You I really won. kicked my butt. So it went great. Well, we had a, a traitorous bodyguard. Ooh. Uh, Oh man, there's a hyper 
hyperspace foil in this pack. A hyperspace Boba Fett. Uh, put him into play. <laughs> you can do it, Von Mothma. Get out there. It's Corey Scott. Colin Feltz. I'm Josh Massey. Get out of my face. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> from Space Arena Ground Arena and my favorite card is the Imperial Interceptor because that's the card we got to preview from FFG. Nice. Alright, we're it's still the middle of the celebration. We're just doing a little check-in. Kurt and Evan are playing games still. And we got we got this is Darth Vader. What? Can't see it right now, but I did take it I like how all these giant cards say marketing purposes only. Which made me laugh because I wanna like, like well, no sh you're not gonna be able to play the card. Well if they didn't say that then you could they're thinking ahead. Somebody was going to try. It's just, this has been real cool. We got to look through our goodie bags. We got 24 boosters, deck blocks, tokens, play mats, sleeves. Play mat for each yeah, us. well, yeah, I guess. Some pins. Yeah, uh, the pins. I'm excited about the pins. Quite a, quite a swag bag. Maybe besides the play mat, those pins might be the thing that's like the most exclusive to this event. Because everything else, people are going to be able to get. Yep. But the most exciting card I pulled was a hyperspace foil Gideon Hask. Yes, I've got, I got. Ooh, it's, it was a, it was hyperspace foil. That's uh -huh, really awesome. The yeah. uh, Tyler, the designer I was playing against, he really wants it because he's getting, <laughs> he's trying to get hyperfoil variants of all the Inferno Squad guys. I'm like, but it's the my first hyperfoil. So unless I, he can give me a hyperfoil like chopper or something. And I did, I did pull two hyperfoils, but they were an uncommon and a rare. Um, and this has just been our first six packs that we did for sealed decks, um, so we still have 18 more to go. Two at uh, two showcases, not from us, but I mean. I think event, like the immediately two, when they said open them, that was the first pack. Yeah, open very the first pack. Showcase. Sugi uh, from a TCG don't, don't worry, opened you, up. You, and, can, uh, you can smile, <laughs> everybody. It's <laughs> Christine Ariel. Oh, <laughs> so sorry. Oh, no, we good. picked the worst spot for this. We just thought the Vader card would be a good background. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jay Trash. I'm part of the Unplayable podcast and YouTube channel. And my favorite card is Mace Windu, by far. Now we're just mingling, doing whatever, trying to get yep. as much info and love as we can get yep. out of this event. Probably going to crack some more packs, make some more decks. People keep, as we stand here, people in the mall, they keep coming up to the window and going, what's happening in there? <laughs> Marketing purposes only. I want a whole deck of cards this size. Hey, my name is Dan. Uh, Dan from Main Deck, and uh, people can find me on Main Deck at YouTube or MainDeck.Games is our website. Uh, my favorite card, Iden Versio Leader. I'm a huge fan of that uh, mid-range control play style. She's perfect. Hey, everybody. It's the day after, and you can probably tell by... Uh, everybody's vibe and voice that it was along yesterday uh but it was awesome and it was worth it and yeah we're gonna what what, what do we do since we last checked in here oh well let's see we a lot yeah uh once we got to the venue uh they sat us down um we watched the first part of the live stream live <laughs> yeah um so we got to extra hear, live yes so we got to hear the uh, uh, Twin Suns announcement. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll talk about because we've all gotten a couple games of those in, yeah. I think, too. So we'll talk about how, the multiplayer format. Uh, but yeah, but then once the Twin Suns announcement was over, um, then we got to start cracking packs and playing um, some sealed with uh, other fellows at our tables. Yeah. And just whoever else we wanted to. Clear up with his iron. Too. Yeah, my first game was wow. against uh, Tyler Perot, one of the designers. He was fantastic to talk to and play with. I do want to point out really quick: you got to play with the designers because they asked for the least popular person. Oh, you volunteered. I did because I'm self-aware. <laughs> I just want to point that out there. Which groups of people that have shown up together today have four or more people? All right. Pick your least favorite of those people and send them up here. Uh, oh, you just got my identification. Wow. Self identification. Hey, Nobody from those groups come up front. Developers, our designers, fill in one of those seats. 
Yeah, the, the, get to play with they, they split right? up the, the larger yeah. groups so that um, we were spread out a little bit more and had the designers sit in those spots. And then, um, yeah, so I played against Tyler Perot. I watched him open his packs. He pulled two Lukes in his six packs. Um, I ended up making a deck with Han, and it did very, very poorly, and I got my butt kicked. Um, but it was still fun. One of the other coolest parts, you, I'm sure you're going to jump in on this too, but... As everyone got all these tables full of people, cracking packs, all of a sudden, back of the room, of course, it's Sugi from TCG Cast who pulls the very first foil hyperspace, Krennic. No, the showcase. Showcase. Showcase Krennic leader. And then within a few minutes, the guy at my table cracks Showcase Palpatine. And it, yeah. it was all down. It's like, oh, well, I got a hyperspace of Boba Fett. Yeah. So it is funny, though, that... We hit those two showcases in the very first round of sealed. Yeah, because a and lot nobody of nobody opened any more all weekend that oh, I know yeah. of. Uh, I'm Jake. I am from the Swoo Holocron. Uh, my favorite card in the game. I've kind of been looking forward to Super Laser Blast for a while, <laughs> so I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with that for right now. What was fun about opening those boosters too is the remaining cards hadn't been spoiled yet, so everyone was going crazy. Oh, here's a new card. Here's another new card. And that was a lot of fun. I was, yeah, yeah. I kept going to Tyler. I'm like, this is new, right? <laughs> because, like, I'm, like, mostly aware of the full card set. So I, when I see a new one, I'm like, I don't think I've seen this. But I don't know for sure because I'm not as good. Like, this is new, right? He's like, yeah, that's new. I'm like, hey, I got a new one. Um, in my packs, I ended up pulling a uh, Grand Inquisitor for my leader and also a Seventh Sister in one of my packs. And those two just pair together so damn well. That, yeah, uh, that's a great combo. My name's Brian. Uh, I'm from the Golden Dice Podcast. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, pretty much anywhere. Uh, my favorite card is probably Overwhelming Barrage. Uh, it just has a lot of uh, utility and uh, can be played to quickly wipe a board, get you a, a little buff, and uh, do all kinds of other sort of cool stuff. After that, um, we were all just encouraged to kind of do whatever. Kurt and I started opening some more packs. Uh, I think, Leo, you guys did draft, we, you too? Yeah, our first yep. draft pod. And there were designers kind of wandering around too, just being like, hey, do you want to play? So I ended up playing with uh, Colin. Hi, I'm Colin Phelps. Uh, I manage the uh, Unlimited Design Team. Uh, all the great designers you've seen on stream and off, uh, I, I help them. Uh, with their non-creative problems. Um, my favorite card is going to competitively be Greedo. Uh, gotta, gotta love Greedo in general, gotta love an aggressive one-drop, gets in there, cunning. I'm a, I'm a cunning individual myself, if I, if I do say so, and uh, got just love, love a good Greedo. <laughs> nice. And that was a really tough match. All the designers are really good at this game because they've been playing a long time, right? right. So, yep. But they're really fun to play against, too. Yeah, shout out to John Leo, uh, homie from back in Indiana, uh, one of the designers, and uh, he had a binder full of extras, so when I needed them for what we'll talk about later, the singleton format, he was just like, do you have a Han Solo? Now you do. How about an Obi-Wan? <laughs> now you do. You need this one? Now you do. It's like, oh, it's all right. right, well, thanks. <laughs> People like, you want to draft? I'm like, I don't. I feel like I'm only going to be able to draft when it's boosters I bought day of specifically for draft. Because there's something in my brain that it feels different. I'm like, well, those cards, even if I haven't seen them yet, those are my cards, and I don't want to, like, pass them around. Oh, I, <laughs> I did I have that bad. happen when I pulled yeah. a Super Laser Blast. Because hmm. I, hadn't, I hadn't hit any legendary cards yet in the packs. I, in those first six packs I opened. So then when the Super Laser Blast came up, I was like, ooh. But I still drafted to win and let the Super Laser Blast go. <laughs> If it yeah. had been like a foil or a hyperspace or something, though, I would have grabbed it. Oh, yeah. Right this away. is probably a good time to do a little cut to Kurt and I had a conversation with Dan Green, our friend from Main Deck YouTube channel, because he was doing draft on the live stream with the designers. And then we talked to him about his thoughts on drafting and things like that. So. Yeah, but we want to talk to Dan from Main Deck. Um, that, my pack three, I did open a Millennium Falcon. And. 
I mean, I could have paid five for it, I guess, <laughs> if I wanted to. But uh, I, I just the, the pack. The rest of the pack wasn't actually that good. I didn't think there were any other cars that make the cut, so I, I went ahead and greedily grabbed the Falcon <laughs> for myself. Um, nice. Yeah, rare drafting like that does come up, right? It's something that some people will do. It really depends on your table uh, and how people like to prioritize things. At the end of the day, you know, again, it's a 30-card deck. You're drafting 45, uh, 43, 42 cards, something right. like you that. Do, yeah, you have so leftovers. There's going to be stuff that you don't fit in. It, it, if, it, if it comes down to, like, for me, rare drafting versus a card that I think is, like, like a takedown or, or a vanquish, and if I'm doing a deck like I did today or, like, a a red three or something and I'm drafting Leia, you know, like I will probably take the card that I actually care about in an event because I generally think being able to perform better in the event will let you like score whatever prize packs you can get and then you can kind of get some of that value back there. True. That's fair, yeah. And thanks again, Dan. We'll probably be talking to you some more later. Absolutely. But tell everybody again where to find your business. Yeah, life. <laughs> my business. Your deal. My, my, my life outside of my full-time job. I, I'm Dan. I have a channel called Main Deck and a website and we do podcasts for Star Wars Unlimited and other games and we do lots of like educational content, how to plays, uh, rarity guides, that kind of stuff. So check me, out, check me out on Main Deck on YouTube. And we're back. <laughs> you just saw the discussion. Uh, what I thought was interesting about it is, I mean, you and me, Joe, have not played as many card games as others. So like, right. I'm pretty new to drafting other than the one kind of one we did online. So it's a really different play style from other games, different uh, mindset of, of how you play that draft. So that's fun. Drafting more than anything else, I think makes me wish that we could be doing it more in person altogether because drafting with strangers is fine. You can do it, but drafting with friends, just like, hey buddies, we got a box, let's yeah. let's go. It yeah. does seem more fun that way. Um, after we tried out draft about then, uh, it was time to take a break from the event center uh, while they kind of tore everything down and got stuff set up for the the after party later in the night. And so we went back to the hotel. We played a, 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 f a couple games of uh, Twin Suns. Twin Suns was fun. I got a game into that after after the after party. Same. And um, I thought that was pretty neat. I think it would, obviously would be better in a space that's quieter and closer. The table we were playing at in the hotel lobby was pretty spaced <laughs> so out. So huge. Yeah, the, the, so the main difference between regular play is it, it's a free-for-all, but you get two leaders instead of just one. But it was cool. The, uh, the the deck building on it is interesting. Um, I was I was told I thought I was ready to play my game of Twin Suns, and I was told that even though the you can have the aspects and whatever combination you want, and you're going to have more because you're playing two leaders and your base heroes and villains. Those aspects, heroism and villainy, cannot team up together. Yeah. So I, I was all set with Jin and Boba, and I thought, oh hey, my. this is going to be cool. Well, and I no. think that's partially because, I mean, they've said that in past streams where, you know, they've purposefully, you know, kind of balanced stuff with the idea of keeping hero heroism and villainy separate, unless you're going to pay that penalty. But still, it seems like a really exciting format. Everyone... Like, Dan, I think, was, like, all in immediately as soon as he could. Oh, he was. So after the main event, um, they kicked us out for a bit. They reset up the space, which was an e-gaming place in the Mall of America called Wisdom Gaming, which was actually very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went back for the, the Celestial Celebration, which was pretty much just some kind of after-party thing. It was very... There was ice sculptures. There was a, a DJ. Orders. There were... Uh, really dr good orders. Oh my yeah. gosh, they were really Yeah, good. you know, people walking around going, would you like a shrimp? And I go, well, yes, I would. I'm a, a distinguished after-partier, apparently. <laughs> uh, they had uh, unlimited-themed drinks that I tried one of each, and they were fine. <laughs> yeah, they weren't as good as I hoped. Hey, yeah. I, I, said, I said, I'm only ever going to have unlimited themed drinks this one time. This is the only time I'm going to have the officially licensed Fantasy Flight command flavored drink. That's true. Aside from like the open bar and the people walking around with these yummy little treats, mm -hmm. it was so fun to be able to chat with all the other people and especially with the the designers of the game for sure and the other people at um 
Fantasy Flight. I had some amazing conversations with Serena, the event manager, who set this whole thing up, basically. So she's amazing, and it was a lot of fun. We were talking about one day we really want Ewok decks, because, you know, that'll be a thing eventually. Don't take that as confirmed, but, like, come on, it's going to... Though they'll be Ewoks eventually. Had some awesome talks with Jim Cartwright, which made me feel. I think I made him really happy about having someone to talk Star Wars about on such a deep level. But also that made me feel really good because I love the lore and I love the cards that are deep cuts like we've been doing in our lore explained videos like Inferno 4 and stuff. And I was talking to him and he was showing me his bookcase of all of his books and we were talking about. High Republic and like deep cut characters like Geode and Jackson and before I thought oh there's never gonna the idea of Geode or Jackson or something being in this game whatever but now after I've talked with him and uh, Xander the PR guy for Unlimited I'm like oh I think that's maybe just a matter of time at this point because these guys love that lore on the same level that I do and that makes me feel really good about the people and the team working on the game. Well, something that was really cool is that you had that great conversation with Jim. We had, prior to that, another conversation with him that was completely different. You know, then then it was just talking about how his, he, all of, he and his siblings, a whole bunch of them, they have grown he up through it. He has seven of them? Yes. He is, wow. he is the oldest of eight. And every, every level, every tier, age, every tier <laughs> of, of sibling has they've all grown up through every generation of Star Wars card game. Mm-hmm. So yeah. they have, like he said, he went home for the holidays and they were playing Destiny, just all the siblings were playing Destiny, and he was like, yo, the Destiny, the age of Destiny is over. <laughs> Kicks them over. Yep, that's what we said. He was <laughs> like, we're going to play this game because, you know, he's he's the man. He had it, and he was able to share with his family the new age, and they were all, all his siblings were just like, yep. Yeah, we're gonna play this. And Jim is the guy. He had all of the aspects tattooed on his arm, which I would do too if I was in his position. I'd be like, yes, I would be very proud and excited to make a game and make a Star Wars game. Real good getting to know the designers and all the other content creators in this community because everyone is so positive and excited about mm-hmm. the game for a lot of the same and a lot of different reasons. And it was really fun getting to talk to and meet a lot of the people. A couple other people we talked to that I want to point out. We got to have a quick chat with Steve Horvath. We just kind of bumped into him in the hallway. That was a good discussion. Mm-hmm. He told us about approving Star Wars Unlimited in 2020. Yeah. Yep. That was when the game basically Because uh, For those unaware, Steve Horvath is the head of Asmodee North America. He used to be, for Our... those that may not remember, he used to be just a designer at FFG. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he said that they, they came to him one day and said, we want to make this Star Wars card game. And he told us his uh, initial... He said immediately, my, I said, like, no, and I'm going to say no. Like, that's my default position on this. Like, we're not in a position... No more Star Wars CCGs. Yeah. We're not in a position, you know, as a company to do this and all this stuff. And he said, but I'll hear your pitch, but I need you to know I'm going to say no. And then by the end of the pitch, he was like, okay, fine, we'll do it. <laughs> And, and Jim, now, Jim corroborated that exact story later on <laughs> in talking with us. And here we are, and obviously uh, Steve Horvath is very proud of all the team who's got us this far. Um, but you can tell how like how good the pitch was and how good the game is that like it's been like a solid, like really great idea from the start. Yeah. The other person I wanted to mention that I don't think we brought up yet was that Christina Ariel was like the, I don't know, the special guest or MC yeah. or something of the event. So we got to meet her a little bit, which was really cool. She was on the live stream because they were doing a learn to play with her um, as like a non-card gamer. It was such a pleasure to get to just chit-chat with her about the High Republic and Star Wars stuff. Um, and that was really fun. She went home with a couple of our stickers, which is really <laughs> exciting. Um, I was sitting there while she was opening her first packs and she was having a lot of fun. Yeah, I don't know. What else is there to talk about yesterday? There was like so oh much playing, gosh. so much uh, pack cracking. For me, I'll just speak for myself, not anybody else. But for me, like this is maybe the most up boosted, I guess you'd say, I have felt about 
uh, a Star Wars game in general in a while. Like, mm -hmm. I think that just the vibe, not just like, hey, we flew you up to the Mall of America and we're feeding you and giving you things. Like, that's not what's doing. It's super cool. It does help. I mean, it's it really, it's really it's cool. cool. It's like, oh, this... 10 years of doing the Johto cast is like, not that it wasn't worth it before, but like, it's like, oh, it, yeah. we're getting somewhere. <laughs> but the level of positivity, getting to, just getting to engage with, with all the other people, the designers, the other shows, the other outlets, each other, first yeah. time in forever. Good point. First time yeah. all four of us are in person. No, you gotta <laughs> make it real. There we go. Yeah. Like men. <laughs> Except Leo, who's yeah. I don't know, dying in the bathroom. That's okay. I think you can expect a lot of unlimited content coming from us up through launch and then well after launch as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and like on the plane ride here, I was hyped and I was already thinking about like articles to write and new formats and how how we can just do more with this like the the possibilities are endless oh. <laughs> i got him i do want to have leo be our podcast's uh, deck doctor so that when because our, our decks are okay but leo's deck i need managed you to, to decimate leo us. i you had such a rock hard deck and i need you to take a look at our weak wimpy deck they're a little floppy <laughs> <laughs> little it, 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 you know what i thought i had an at least an average deck but it really let me down and so if you know somebody with more experience could take a look sometime well because we played <laughs> <laughs> i honestly think you guys overestimate my skills <laughs> well, that, or y'all are just really that bad that it no, that's it. Like that, like, <laughs> you can look forward to all sorts of unlimited coverage from us, as well as coverage of all of your other favorite Star Wars games, and maybe your not favorite Star Wars games, because I, I like playing weird Star Wars games too. In addition to this, if you like Star Wars, stay here. If you like unlimited, stay here. If you like other things, I don't know. But uh, thanks everybody for watching. This has been a blast. I don't know, what I was asking everybody, as you probably saw throughout this video, is what your favorite card is. So please tell me what your favorite card is in the comments. Just a single card. You can tell me why, but you can only pick one card. Yeah, so thank you everybody so much for watching. Thanks to Fantasy Flight. This was amazing. Thanks to all the other wonderful content creators we met. And uh, I guess you wanna, you subscribe. Wanna... Yeah, well, if you want more of our particular brand of unlimited content, Subscribe, hit the bell yeah. so that you always get notified. I'm trying to... That's You said it in such a positive way. That's good. It's It still feels weird for me to say that, but I know I should. Okay. I mean, the force be with you. <laughs>